So here I am in the integration test class. I'm going to list down all the integration tests that I want to write here. I want to test that it returns the correct response status code, which is 201 for created, when a valid request is sent. Then it should return status code 400 when the ID exists in the request body. And it should also return status code 400 when the post ID is invalid in the request URL. And finally, I want to test whether it returns a JSON with ID, post ID, and the comment message in the response when a valid request is sent. So I'll start by copying this test and then I'm going to rename it to add comments for a valid request status is created. So now we have to change the request method from get to post. The URL is the same. Now this post request has a request body. So I'll set the request body using the content method and I'll pass in the JSON that I want to send in the request body to the content method as a string. So this is the JSON that we're going to send in the request. And then I'm going to make it into a single line and copy and paste it in here within double quotations so all the double quotes inside will automatically get escaped. The status expected here is created. So now all done with the test, I can run it. I'm going to run all of the tests in this class. The test is failing because the expected status code is 201, but the response returned with a status code 405, which is method not allowed. And if you look at the console, here's the exception. It is an HTTP method not supported exception. That means the controller or the application does not serve a post request for that URL. Or in other words, there is no method serving a post request in the controller. We only have a get request mapping annotation here, so let's add the correct annotation to the method. The request URL is post slash id slash comments. And this id is the post id which is the path variable here. And if you notice here, I've added the request body annotation to the comment parameter. So let's run the tests again. Again, it's failing. Now it's returning a 415 status code, which is used for unsupported media type. Let's look at the console. So here's the post request, the request URL and the JSON request body, and the exception is HTTP media type not supported exception. So we're getting this exception basically because we are not setting the content type in the request headers when sending the request. So let's do that in the test. Here I'm going to set the content type. Set it to media type application JSON. I'll run the test again. This time I'm going to run only this test so it's easy to find the request and the response in the console. Again, it's failing due to an assertion error. The status expected was 201 but was 200, meaning OK. To set the correct status code on this method, all you have to do is add the response status annotation and set the HTTP status code to create it, just like we did in the exception class. So again, I'll run this test. Now it has passed. So the second test that I'm going to write is to check whether it returns status code 400 if the comment ID was sent in the request body. 
I'll copy the previous test and rename it to invalid request with comment ID status 400. And I'm going to modify the JSON to include the ID in the request body. ID is 1 and uh, the message I'm going to set it to test comment 2. Change the expected status to bad request. I'll run the test. It passes because I've already added this response status annotation to the exception class, and whenever it is thrown from the comment controller, the response status code is set to 400. Now, the third one is to test whether it returns the status code 400 if the post ID is invalid. Again, I'll copy this test and then rename the method to invalid request with invalid post ID returned status 400. So now I'm going to set the post ID to an invalid value. And then the comment message, I'm going to set it to test comment 3. I'm setting these uh, comment messages different in different tests so that it's easier to identify in the console. Now I can run this test. So that test has passed as well. And finally, I'm going to test whether it returns a JSON with ID, post ID and the comment message in the response when a valid request is sent. For that, I'm going to again copy one of the previous tests and rename. A valid request returns created comment with ID, post ID and message. And expect, I'm going to get the ID from the JSON of the response. So the JSON path expression for that is $.id and the matcher is is 1. So the second one is post ID and that's going to be whatever we sent in the request URL. I'm going to set it to 4 so that it's more clear and then the message. So that's all for that test and I'm going to run it now. So here's the request and the request URL. This is the request body and then we have the response body with ID, post ID and the message. So coming back to this test, this ID is not something that we sent in the request and not something that we always have control in the test. So what I'm going to do is to set this to something which is more predictable. I'll change this matcher to greater than zero. Ideally, we shouldn't have anything in the database, so it shouldn't be a problem, but just to be on the safe side. So that's all the integration tests that I had planned for this. And now I'm going to run all of the tests in this comment API test class. Great, all tests are passing.